Hello, and welcome to the View from Cyboss video series 2020. This year, the conference is being held virtually for the first time ever. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor of The Banker, and I'm joined via video link by Sharak Monian, who is EMEA Head of Wholesale Payments at JP Morgan. Sharak, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me, Joy. So how has JP Morgan really supported its FI and corporate clients through the pandemic so far? And maybe let's take a focus on payments and how challenging payments has been. When COVID hit from one day to another, there were three priorities for our corporate and FI clients. First of all, people's safety. So all staff had to switch to work from home, which meant setting up uh, new email uh, connections, uh, setting up connections to ERP systems, to treasury workstations, all in a safe manner. Uh, secondly, they had to come up with new signatories for uh, new signatory processes for approvals, which they had to do every day. And then last but not least, they had to make sure they have access to liquidity because supply chains were drying up and revenues were under pressure as consumer demand went down and more or less collapsed. So during this period, I'm proud to say that we went out of our way successfully to support our clients. First of all, we continue to support them in their day-to-day -day operations without any disruption. And we, in fact, broke some records in our daily transaction values. So from a peak of $6 trillion, we went to $9 trillion. Secondly, we helped our clients to more rapidly move to the digital world. For example, e-signatures for all the approvals that were required. And last but not least, we supported them in their liquidity needs. First of all, by providing real-time information for access to internal liquidity within a company. And then, of course, by injecting fresh credit lines to the tune of double-digit billions uh, within a, a few weeks into the economy. And so cross-border payments uh, always is a bit of a pain. You know, what are the improvements that are coming down the line? Cross-border payments go through different regulatory scrutiny in terms of sanctions and embargo and AML, for example, uh, that domestic payments and involve more parties. And that's why we usually refer to them as being more challenging. I believe there are three things that could help smoothen the process. First of all, a more harmonized interpretation of the regulations, such as the EU funds transfer regulation. Secondly, a faster communication process between the different banks involved when issues come up. And this is exactly what we've tried to improve using blockchain technology with our IIN, the IN platform, Interbank Information Network, which we launched a couple of years ago with the initial use case being around sanctions and embargo issue resolution by increasing the speed of communication between banks. Today, we have uh, over 100 banks live on the platform and another 400 more letters of intent to join, including 28 of the large, largest banks and players out there of the top 50 in the world. Um, and then finally, I would say the adoption of a single richer format, such as the ISO format by SWIFT and across all key clearing systems for the major currencies so that the information about the payment doesn't get truncated and therefore can be handled STP. And this is one of the challenges that we have today, and I think this will resolve that. Cybersecurity is always a hot topic at Cyboss, and you mentioned a little bit about it there, but you know, what advances have been made? Technology is our best friend and our most dangerous enemy at the same time, because it's really an arms race between the good use of technology and the bad. Uh, lots of progress has been made to stay ahead of bad actors using machine learning, artificial intelligence, big data. We use that word a lot, but this is also used in this field, and pattern analysis. But we need to continue to invest in this field to remain ahead. Um, for example, we at JP Morgan, we spend over $11 billion on technology every year in our business line a good portion of which is used on cybersecurity. We just need to continue that effort going forward. My last question is really about the correspondent banking model and how it has to change um, for the digital world. Look, I believe that correspondent banking has actually come a long way in the past five years, especially through Swift GPI, where using real-time API technology 
there's a track and trace capability for cross-border payments, very similar to the ones we used to when we ship goods and packages around the world. So transparency has come to the top of the table and we made a lot of progress there. The next question is how we can use other pieces of the new digital world, such as blockchain, to make clearing, settlement, and problem resolution real time. And again, I think with the IIN platform that we've launched, we're on the right track to add additional services with the goal of making correspondent banking a seamless real-time experience with a 21st century feeling, if you like. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your insights, Sharak. Thank you very much, Joy. Enjoyed it.